I'm Dr. Steve Nissen, and I'm here with Dr. Wilson Tang, who's a member of our heart failure section. Uh, he's both a, a clinician, takes care of patients, and he's a basic researcher who studies uh, the genetics and some other aspects of the development of disease. So he's really a great guy to talk about what we're going to talk about today, which is cardiomyopathy. So for patients, what's a cardiomyopathy? Uh, well, cardio means heart, yeah. and myopathy means muscle weakness. Yeah. So it's really when the heart muscle is weakened for unexplained reasons, and now we actually have more and more explanations, uh, and so specific uh, drugs and devices can be targeted to actually help these people. So the more com most common form we call dilated cardiomyopathy, when the heart gets big and doesn't yes. contract very well, and for patients that have this, uh, so what do they need to know in order to take good care of themselves and make sure they get the best possible outcome? Yeah, so dilated cardiomyopathy is one of the more common forms. And uh, when your doctor actually uh, identifies that there are no blockages in the blood vessel, then this is usually uh, the, the form that the majority of patients have. We have uh, very good medicines, uh, about four or five of them, uh, some of them very new, uh, like uh, Entresto is yeah. one of them. Uh, and we try to maximize their medicines. And is this like, um, it's, a, it's a detailed kind of protocol because what we needed to do is try to calm down all the systems in the body by adding small increments so that people actually can balance uh, their systems and doesn't actually get too low in their blood pressure or feeling too weak. And people feel better and, and of course they are now living longer. Yes, if over time people do feel better, uh, they could walk further. We do put them in cardiac rehabilitation so they could, could exercise, I call them workouts, spring training I call them. And what we actually try to do is continue to extend on different new medicines and different strategies. And to be honest with you, all the things that we have done for the last 20 years, uh, people's longevity has, is, is, is quite good. In fact, uh, the, the, uh, the rates that we have is, you know, we see people five, 10 years without any problems. Right? Now you're an expert in the genetics of these disease, yes. this disease, cardiomyopathy, and is, why, should people have their genetic profile done? And if so, why should they have yeah. it done? So there are different types of genetic testing. What we are talking about here is testing the genes that we know may cause heart failure or cardiomyopathy. Yeah. So there are panels of them. Those are well known. We have studied for 20, 30 years. We have big catalogs, huge dictionaries of what are these genes that may actually lead to kind of uh, development of dilated or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, it has been uh, pretty much a routine for most people at the initial evaluation. That wasn't the case five, ten years ago. Is that true in the in community hospitals? Or yes. Is that true only in yes. Major? Yeah. In fact, I think uh, there are many national uh, uh, testing uh, uh, companies that actually help. It is reimbursed, and uh, the prices are actually much lower than what it was before. Yeah. Why, when you, I was in training and when you are, when you are attending, we used to send it to research labs. It costs a lot of money. It lost, costs a lot of money. Now it's probably, you know, uh, within the hundreds of dollars. So we talked about this, this dilated cardiomyopathy where the heart is kind of big and mm -hmm. boggy, but the coronaries aren't blocked, mm -hmm. but there are other forms. Uh, yes. Maybe you could explain, uh, people may have been told they have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Yes. So what is that? Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an unexplained thickness of the heart. Usually when we, we hear uh, uh, athletes having abnormal hearts that also had, you know, suddenly kind of collapse in the, in the football field or in the basketball court, that's the type. They actually have rhythm problems as well as problems with the, the blood not getting out of the heart. And they subsequently de develop also stiffness of the heart. Some people actually get more and more stiff and the heart cannot actually kind of uh, bring the blood to the rest of the body. And there are other rarer types that the heart is just too stiff, even without the thickness. And a very rare type that uh, potentially have a lot of rhythm problems. It comes from different families. Now let's just take on one more for, for patients. So for people that have been told they have amyloid heart disease, maybe you could explain what that is yeah. and whether there are treatments for it. Amyloid is a protein stain in tissues and it's really uh, unique. And what it does is when it, it deposits in different parts of the tissue, 
it causes the, heart, the, the, the tissues to be not functioning as well. In the heart, it's the muscle contraction that got impaired. So what happened is, when over time, I'm talking about years, uh, these abnormal, abnormal uh, proteins that are either made by the blood cells or by, by the liver uh, deposit in the heart and causes the heart to be stiff. And now we actually have new drugs both in both types of, of, of amyloid. Just approved within the last just for month. Yeah, just approved as well. Uh, some of them do run in families, and so we now with the genetics really identify a lot of people that we previously wasn't even suspecting them to have a family history of heart failure and cardiomyopathy. Now with good family history taking as well as genetic testing, we're able to identify them. Um, some of these people present with carpal tunnel syndrome first. Yes, in fact, uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Mass Hanna, uh, certainly did a study when they actually identified those with bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome. And now even with spinal stenosis, we observed that too. Kind of the deposition is not only in the heart. In fact, the heart and the nerves are the two organs that have the cells that live the longest. Yeah. And so what happened is uh, we actually could see in those areas, also the same staining of amyloid. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, I hope uh, this has been helpful to the patients who have these diagnoses. And thank you so much for, for watching. And thank you so much, Dr. Wittang.